Hey everybody, Breakfast with Bob. My name is Bob Babbitt. We're at Challenge Daytona in the PTO 2020 Championship. We are sponsored by Captiva Spine, John Hall Chevrolet, USA Triathlon, Foundation Risk Partners, and the PTO, the Pro Triathletes Organization. Our next guest, Carrie Lester, who is coming off in eighth place, 2019 Kona. Who thought we would be talking about 2019 races and not much in 20? Did you race at all in 2020? I have not hit a start line at all this year. This is the one and only for the year, Bob. And are you excited to be going not just against other Ironman athletes, not against other just 70.3? You got ITU, you got all these people from all these different distances? Excited and a little bit scared. And <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I really don't know what to expect. Um, and I, I really don't think any of us know what to expect. I think, you know, many of us haven't raced this year so yeah. i don't know you know we're used to racing at this time of year you know with a whole season of racing behind us so we know kind of what form everyone's yeah. in and um we kind of know what to expect but this is um this Flying is a blind. whole unknown yeah and yeah. uh we've got a you know yeah like you said we've got a real mix of athletes in there so it's going to be very interesting to see how all of the different race dynamics come into play um on sunday <laughs> so when you were a track athlete what was your what was your distance what was your event uh 100 and 200 meters so 100 200 meters and i'm guessing you know you're talking what 11 seconds 10 uh, you're talking you're talking under 20 seconds for your big events uh not quite yeah uh Good. i think um uh, my best times for the 100 was uh 1170 yeah it was a 2390 for for a 200 so okay. so <laughs> then we're talking kona i don't was, run that anymore <laughs> yeah yeah kona was 858.40 how do you go from being a 100 and 200 person to going oh i think i'm gonna go eight plus out oh nine hours i'm gonna go long uh i you know i never considered that when i was running on the track yeah I think, uh, you know, back in the day, my coach was always trying to tell me that I was a 400 runner because I had that, I, I mean, I had the sprint, but he saw more of the endurance in me and he was always trying to push me to at least just go to the 400, but I couldn't even handle going from the 100 to 200 to then the 400. It was just a ridiculous. horrible experience. Thinking about running all the way it around that horrible. track. It was horrible. That's so, ridiculous. Um, I think I did, I raced the 400 on the track once and I will never ever forget the pain that I felt at 300 <laughs> meters. It was like someone hit me yeah, yeah, with yeah. like a wall of bricks and it was just, my whole body was in pain. So um, that was that was my one race, and it was like I never wanted to do another one. So how I've come to this point, yes. I think, was just you know I I quit running track, and I still wanted to keep fit, and I started just doing some um, 10k fun runs in right. Australia, just you know I just to just to be social and be right. fit, and then slowly just started. Going you know my triathlon life, and yeah. Longer and longer. When did you realize? Oh wait a second, I can. There's money. I can actually get paid to do this. Um, well, it wasn't until I was probably racing as an age group athlete for um, about five years. Yeah. And I started training with uh, Brett Sutton's um, team TBB, and I was actually coached by one of um, Brett's sub coaches, Matt Curry. Yeah. So um, they were the ones that kind of started to push me you know to look to professional racing and that yeah. I had something that you know maybe it yeah. was worth giving yeah. it a shot um you know I was working full-time and uh Brett basically said and Matt basically said you know if, if you if you want to do this and if you want to you know race internationally and make money out of the sport then um you basically need to quit your job. <laughs> <laughs> what was your job? Uh, I was at the time I was working for a chiropractor. Okay. Um, I've been I'd been in insurance. I'd been in banking, um, and at the time uh, that I was uh, with Brett and Matt, I was just working in an office at a chiropractic office. Yeah. And uh, and they gave me the nudge. And they said this might be a little more fun than working in a chiropractor's office. It was yeah. It was definitely worth the risk. When you, because you were in those early meetings in Bahrain, right? When the PTO was first mentioned and, hey, we were going to get an organization and 
put the pros together. And this is a concept that people have been talking about since the earth was cooling, like in the early 80s, uh, pros are gonna work together. Did you ever think it would get to this point? Here we are, at a, we're getting close to a race with $1.15 million at stake and the greatest collection of athletes probably ever assembled in one place. Well, I think initially that, you know, I, like you said, I was in that room in, in Bahrain years ago. And I think, um, I think many of us at that point were really kind of uncertain of what direction it would take. Mm. And following that, it kind of fizzled out. We didn't really hear kind of much, much about it until, until recently. Yeah. Um, and at that point, um, I felt like, okay, this is, this is really going to take off here. And I think we've really got a lot of momentum mm -hmm. in the last um, 12 months. Right. And athletes are really starting to see and believe that, we can come together and make a change in the sport. Um, so, yeah, I'm just so happy to be a part of that. I'm, you know, obviously approaching the end of my career. No, <laughs> come on now. You know, I'm 39 <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I just, f I am very optimistic about the way that, um, you know, I see all of the athletes coming together and, the athletes that are here to race on Sunday, you mm -hmm. know, we're, we're all here to race together to just show what, what we're trying to do with the sport. Show unity. Show, the, show unity. Show unity. And, you know, when I, when I look at, obviously, nobody wanted what's happened to happen. Right? Nobody oh, wants no. a year without racing because we, that's our lifeblood. We race. That's what we do. Uh, but what has stood out, obviously, has been the support of the PTO. You know, in a time when people are wondering how they're going to pay their bills, coming out and saying, we're going to help pay your bills, even though there's no racing. And we're going to come up with maternity leave. And we're going to do some of these things that, even in the best of times, nobody thought would ever happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what are you hearing from other pros about the, the support of PTO? Oh, it's, it's nothing but positive. Um, nothing but positive talk, you know, amongst the professional athletes. Yeah. I think, you know, when COVID really started to um, take hold back in March and we were starting to see, you know, races canceling yeah. every single weekend, um, you know, for, for the professionals that I guess who have been in the sport for some time and, you know, they've, you know, been able to um, kind of win, oh, well, not win races, but you know they're Make a they're making a living, right. um, or they or they have um, sponsors that still mm -hmm. have been able to pay them, or that have been you know paying them for the last few years. So they've got a little bit of security there when it comes to right. you know money. But um, for those developing athletes and for those athletes that you know are struggling with all of those races gone and no kind of you know backing, right? Then it was like, well, wh what do we do now? So. You know, that's where the PTO really stepped up and was able to support not just the athletes at the top end, mm -hmm. but they supported all of those athletes that are struggling. There right. are struggling professional athletes. Right. Um, and they, they supported, you know, everyone. So. That's so cool. It's so cool. And, and they've continued yeah. to support everyone throughout the whole year. And they're still looking at ways to. To do more. To help out. To give athletes a yeah. chance to make money. Right. Well, and then the other thing that you have coming up, obviously, in May, the Collins Cup, which is a cool new concept where you've got international, you've got Europeans, mm -hmm. and you've got Americans. Yeah. Team format, competing sure. against each other uh, on a great course in Samarin. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that's going to be a, another major moment for PTO next year. Absolutely. And we're going to get, you know, another chance to show, you know, what – our sport can do and we come together as athletes and and put us out there on a stage so right. the world can see you know what the sport of triathlon is all about but it's not just that race as well bob i mean you know a lot of races were cancelled this year and they were able to put money into some small local yeah. races yes that gave professional athletes the opportunity to earn right. some money so yeah. they're, they're finding ways they're finding ways to to go above and beyond so for yourself, 
what do you look when I look at at your career and some of the cooler races, you know, Embra Man and Optuez and you like those those races with character, right? With grit to them. Races mm-hmm. that that test you beyond just an Ironman distance. You want it, okay, it's Ironman, that's okay, but I need a little altitude. I need eh, maybe some 50 degree water. I, I need, there's got to be something else that's a little a little bit of uh, spice mm-hmm. to the race. Is that is yeah. that a fair assessment of your <laughs> what you love? Definitely. I think uh, in the last five years, I've always had a f- couple of those races in my in my race yeah. calendar for the year um you know scotty and i have always picked i'm in um france afterwards yes. ombre man we always kind of throw those ones in there but it just because this because they are so different right the course is so different it's extremely challenging mm-hmm. so you know it just prepares you in another way for uh those races, I guess, where the courses are a little easier. Right. Um, but again, that, that's different when you're racing on courses. I mean, like we're going to be racing on Sunday, yeah. that is flatter. <laughs> um, and we're doing 20 laps around, you know, a race course. That's different again. And it's challenging because, you know, it's you're going to be around more people. Right. This um, is going to be... Yeah. There's going to be more dynamics there. So, yep. And you're going to have all these... 20 year old 20 year old ITU athletes who are who are, who are, who are be this is a major you, you know what this is like this is like you going I'm not running 400 no. that's way too far these guys are used to running riding 25 miles now they're going to be riding 49 50 miles going oh my god this yeah. is long and it's like there's a lot of these girls that I haven't raced before ever like ever yeah um so yeah it's uh I'm going to be around a lot more people yeah in like in those courses that I mentioned Alpe d'Huez you're and by Alpe yourself Manier, you're pretty much by yourself which is why I do like doing them because I mean it's it's you against the course yep. and you you just you it's you develop yourself as an athlete so right. much in those races so yeah. um yeah it's different what do you look at as your best race that you've had you know i i think um i met mont tremblant last year really has always is, is still standing out for yeah. me um it was a race that was not on my calendar uh we were actually supposed to have gone and raced umbra man but uh we choose we chose to race uh tremblant instead yeah and which is a great course which was a great course yeah and it was, it was just one of those days where I just felt like Perfect. in control. Yeah. And there was nothing that was going to happen on that day that, you know, was going to take me away from, you know, what I went there for. And I went there to win. Um, yeah, it was, it was a it was good a day. Perfect day. That one. And I think I've had, I've had uh, probably two really good races in Ombra Man as well that are, they've been... Um, Extremely challenging. Yes. Uh, the year before, I crashed my bike um, pretty late into the bike leg and uh, was able to pick myself up and and get my way through the marathon and won it. So those <laughs> those two races for me have been mentally and physically just highlights of my career. What I love is is when you go to a race like Ironman World Championship, the the weather, the wind, the heat. That makes it become almost an Umbra Man type experience when you get to the last 10K of that marathon, right? It's, it's a suffer fest, mm-hmm. and that's usually where you shine, right? The harder it gets, the better Carrie mm-hmm. Lester does. And <laughs> watching you run your way into eighth place last year and what, 8.58.40, going you know, sub nine hours, you have to be pretty proud of that effort. I was, I was very proud of the race last year for sure. I think... Um, it's still it's still a little disappointing in that uh, I felt like last year I was in form to to be in top five. Yeah. Um, I made the mistake pretty early on the bike of dropping my race nutrition, so mm. I had to kind of stumble my way through that. But what I'm so proud of in that race is that when that happened, like I was cool. You know, I didn't panic or. I didn't hit the emergency button or anything. Right. I was just, okay, like, what am I going to do? I immediately went into just carry on and, you know, just totally calm. 
I knew when I got off and started running the marathon that I wasn't myself um, and I wasn't going to be able to run, you know, what I was sure. capable of running, but it didn't, like, it just didn't matter. I thought, you know, I'm just... Get the most out of it. What's happened's happened and I'm going to get the most out of it. So, and I did. I, and I couldn't have done any, any better, so proud. Hey, as a coach, what, what does coaching bring to you? Because a lot of times, you know, being an athlete is, can be pretty selfish. But when you're coaching, you know, you sort of take part of each of those athletes. Yeah. And they become part of you. Mm -hmm. And then you become part of them. What, what do you take from coaching? I think, you know, and the biggest thing for me has actually been this year, you know, coaching athletes yes. through COVID. Right. And where, where they have no, no goal, They've right? They've had no goals. Um, That's a really good point. And for me, it's the coaching has, I love to see athletes have triathlon as their lo it's it's a, it's, it's a part of their life more than just a race it's now not it's, a race it's, it's who they are it's, it's who they are yeah. they they i hope to encourage them and and train them to have a healthy relationship with the sport right and that's what we do in our business our business is our kiss coaching keep it simple coaching and that's what we do we want athletes to have balance mm -hmm. and have a healthy relationship with Yes. Well, triathlon or running, or we don't just coach triathlon. Scotty coaches um, a couple of runners as well. Right. So it's whatever they do, but we want them to, it's a part of their lifestyle. So when I see my athletes going and doing their training every day, and it doesn't matter if there's a race or not, that's what makes me happy because that's a part of their life. And no, it's, I yeah. love it when they do it with their partners. Right. Um, it's, it's their lifestyle. Yeah. That's awesome. Carrie, always, thank you so much for taking time. I, I always learn something every time we <laughs> chat. Thank you, Bob. Carrie Lester has been our guest, everyone. Hold on. We'll be right back.